welcome to Fourth Partner Energy's special series, Spotlight on Sustainability. Over the last few times we met, we learned about how Marico's sustainable farming methods helped coconut farmers associated with the company to increase their yield by nearly 20%. We learned about how Tech Mahindra's green marshals or environment ambassadors ensure that every stakeholder is committed to their surroundings. Clearly, for today's businesses to be successful, they need to prioritize three P's. People, planet and profitability. In today's episode, we throw the spotlight onto a company that was birthed the same year India won independence. What started off as a manufacturer of textiles, today boasts of several verticals like chemicals, specialty chemicals and even electrical equipment manufacturing. It is one of India's leading public listed companies and a flagship of the Aditya Birla Group. Let's throw the spotlight onto Grasam Industries and how the companies prioritize ESG. with Surya Valluri, Head of Sustainability at Grasam Industries. Surya, thank you so much for making time for Fourth Partner Energy in this special show. Thank you, Nithya. Thank you for having me. It's it's really an auspicious time to, to, to talk to you because we just recently celebrated our 75th of our existence, which started with a very humble beginning in textile and now become a major conglomerate. And also we, we celebrated along with the Ajadi Kamrut also with India's independence together for the 75th year. And then, of course, we have a huge legacy and a lot to contribute to the post-colonial Indian uh, growth story. So it's it's wonderful to catch up with you to, to, to tell our story. So really interesting to note, you mentioned humble beginnings, but since then it's been magnificent growth for the Grassum group of companies, right? Textile manufacturing you started off as, but then you're looking at insulators, paints, specialty chemicals. So clearly, how does it work prioritizing sustainability for each of these different businesses? Must not be quite an easy task for the entire team, right? Informally, we have been practicing all these uh, issues related to the sustainability, be it is on the materiality issues or be it on any society issues, be it on being engaged as a corporate. So with, with this kind of a background, even though this is a very diversified uh, portfolio, it's very easy for us because we could be able to segregate each of these challenges across the businesses and within the businesses across the unit. So that way it is very, very easy for each of the business to identify that and then put up those uh, targets. I can tell you so many examples, but uh, let, me, let me pick you up one example. Despite we having uh, uh, lower norms in terms of environmental uh, uh, regulations in India, we have been uh, practicing some of the uh, best available technologies across the globe and implementing them in India. So that is a kind of, uh, uh, you know, corporate philosophy that we have uh, kind of corporate focus we have on this ESG. Now it's very interesting. Uh, uh, see, each of these business have their a clear focus. It's 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 a top driven uh, as well as bottom up approach. So uh, when we look at the, each of these business, there are location specific issues. There are mm -hmm. location specific challenges. Then as a country, we have certain different uh, challenges, and then as a conglomerate, we have different challenges. We 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 uh, we incorporate all of them together, and each of these business start identifying where, which are the priority areas. For example, on the materiality front. Now, water is, is the most prestigious commodity. And you look at uh, one of our business, pulp and fiber. It has been one of the, uh, the pioneers in pulp and fiber, in fiber industry with lowest cotton consumption of water. Uh, we have been constantly uh, focusing on it, not only on the, on, the, on the consumption base, even on the water conservation. We have been into our uh, constructing various 
check dams or dams to the, to, to to ensure that the water which is going into uh, some wastes are going into the into sea or not into the natural streams is being diverted and put into dams these kind of work has been started ever since the inception itself hmm. so like that uh, each business identified the areas in which they need to focus so there is no one specific area that we have been focusing we have been focusing across the entire sustainability front of our our business uh, existence be it on the materiality be it on social engagement or be it on our uh, on 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 gg emissions the, mm-hmm. these these all businesses are very very forefront in terms of identifying putting up some road maps and uh, coming up with some solutions so we are talking about the meaty chunk of your business today grasam has carved a niche for itself as a sustainable fabric manufacturer whether it's yarn a fiber or textiles and this has not been very easy right the philosophy that you follow of from uh, the forest to fashion is now popular worldwide what spurred this thought process at grasip yeah it's a, a very good question again like see textile is no longer um, uh, you know the fashion part of it like the, the, the garment part of it and there is a lot of traction happening in the entire value chain even though it's it, it's it's global footprint is uh, is not that high as any petrochemical or any other big uh, industry but however there is a lot of focus because of the visibility of and the end consumer interaction and what they are spending and what they are buying and what it is uh, inside and how it is coming etc so looking into all that uh, uh, you know this 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 mega trends that are coming up has actually uh put us into uh, understanding this very quickly so uh in uh, then we started realizing that it is not about the manufacturing itself it is about the complete value chain mm-hmm. and and the complete uh, presence mm-hmm. of our value chain right from forest because we are into mmc of uh, space in in uh, pulp and fiber so from entire value chain and also we are into fashion uh, fibers and then we are into textiles so we started realizing this this is not about just manufacturing or producing the the the, the commodity like uh, yarn or fiber it is about understanding the whole mega trends what is being tracked and what is being asked by the by 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 the stakeholders Mm-hmm. so uh, once we having realized that we started then focusing on each step of our manufacture so in the mmc we started from forest then we we quickly understood that we need to have a, a very uh, you know uh, responsible sourcing of wood so then we aligned with some of the ngos like ssc and we have got canopy on board and then we started following them and then we adopted the policies and aligned our policies along with that and we today we have uh, i can probably say that grassins pulp and fiber is the highest ranked canopy uh, certified manufacturer in in, in uh, fashion value chain in mmc space mr valluri most manufacturing processes are energy intensive which means the fuel consumption for these processes is extremely excessive right How much of a challenge has this been for Grasm, considering that all your group companies are in the manufacturing line? And what is Grasm looking to do to accelerate its energy transition in that sense? Or if I could ask you, if you have any goals specifically set for cutting down of your uh, carbon emissions? Yeah, uh-huh. so it's it's a it's a mega challenge right now for us uh, oh. because as a uh, as an industry, Grasm uh, as a conglomerate. has uh, some extremely good credentials towards materiality issues however on the ghg front there is a journey which need to be like you know is is a very difficult path to to, to cross uh, however each of these businesses here within the grassium has actually have actually um, come out with their with their uh, targets in terms of ghg reductions one interesting point here to note is Uh, uh, almost all the businesses they don't have process related ghg emissions most of the ghg is coming from the power the energy needs themselves so we are we are fast looking for solutions in the energy substitution from fossil fuel to alternative fuels 
you know, uh, you can understand very much the infrastructure related issues in terms of RE power. You can also understand the, the challenges around the new technologies towards more green power and green energy. So while these are all in the back of our mind, we have been working with various innovators. We have been working with various uh, agencies uh, so that uh, we address all these things simultaneously. So, for example, we are now looking forward for having some kind of uh, common policies or uniform policies across for, for banking, for power, for RE power, because that's very important. And then secondly, we need to have a reliable grid, the state grids, uh, especially where uh, the most of these manufacturing facilities are in remote locations which have access to the state grid. And we are looking forward for those state grids to improve their infrastructure. Mm. Or we are we are collaborating with them to ensure that these things are uh, fast moved in the right direction, and then we are also looking for new technology sites. Right? So we have actually divided this into three of uh, four categories. First one is wherever we can improve in investing in okay. in uh, alternative technology, whereby we can conserve energy or improve our energy footprint. That we are doing it without any uh, year on year or focus in our capital allocation in that. And secondly, we are looking to work with various stakeholders in improving the infrastructure as I was telling you. This is very important for us. And then we are also looking for various uh, partners for our RE uh, uh, solutions in terms of energy, be it power. And then we are looking for uh, new technology development, be it uh, storage of power or be it uh, hydrogen as a fuel or maybe, uh, uh, you know, carbon capture. Carbon capture seems to be a far-fetched one, but uh, the other solution seems to be, yeah, we, there will be some headway too, uh, and we are hoping for it. As you are aware, Mr. Waluri, Fourth Partner Energy is in the business of offering clean, affordable energy solutions to corporates across India and Southeast Asia. And the heartening thing to note is companies like yourselves, right, are indicating that, well, it might be difficult, a little challenging, to adopt renewable energy, clean energy, to cut down GHG emissions, to reduce the carbon footprint. But it is no longer an option. It is the need of the hour. It is an absolute imperative. And that awareness is really what it takes to spur change, right? Well, if I can just quickly change uh, gears and move it from the E of environment to E of employees. One thing in Grasim is that you're constantly investing into upskilling and learning and development what you term as intellectual capital. Can you talk to us really about the need of the hour for companies to upskill their employees and why it mattered to your company? I can give you one very good example again here with, with, uh, with our fiber business. We have TRA DC Textile Research and Development Center and also we have uh, Fiber Research Center FRC. This is in our, uh, our facility in Gujarat. We have uh, started now producing circular fibers, a very big into circularity. And we started taking pre consumer waste, cotton waste, 30% and replacing it with virgin cotton. In this journey, we will be replacing or uh, uh, reducing our wood consumption in that pulp, and then our energy footprint, and then our materiality footprint will reduce by 30%. We have very highly ambitious targets in this sector. Similarly, uh, the same is the case with, um, with uh, our uh, chemicals and uh, our, our fashion yarn business as well as our uh, specialty chemicals. Specialty chemicals is the one which is looking now to become uh, carbon neutral as soon as it can and it is, it is very highly betting on uh, getting into RE uh, energies, renewable energies. So all this is getting supported by, by these research facilities. And this is very, very important for us, so not only to, to, to meet these, uh, the sustainability credentials as well, however, to grow and to, to grow ambitiously uh, to meet our targets. That's, that's uh, there. This intellectual capital is there. We have been very highly focusing on investing. Undoubtedly, Surya, and you can see that companies in India and outside are learning the importance of upskilling the workforce from within, right? If I can also draw your attention to one other from personal experience lesson that I'd like to learn from Grasim really, it is at Fourth Partner Energy, a lot of our operations are either on the shop floor, whether it's procurement, whether it's construction of mega projects. 
and a lot of times it is difficult to have equal women representation in your workforce right it's a lesson that we're constantly learning we are looking at increasing the women in our uh, you know employee base we're looking at ensuring inclusivity diversity gender parity a lot of measures are being taken at popel on women in leadership roles right what can companies like us learn from grasm when you talk about ensuring that there are women who represent uh, the company in leadership roles at board level also when you talk about maybe the shop floor or manufacturing intensive processes are women really in those roles and how are you ensuring is grasm that you are setting a leadership trend in this fund yeah it's uh... you know it's uh, typically in the manufacturing it, people used to think that its manufacturing is is uh, is a male driven kind of a work environment however it's fast changing and uh, grasm is one of those very uh, upfront in terms of you know adopting that and we are actually started uh, at forget about the top leadership level but at the at the even at the shop floor level we started recruiting people for uh, shop floor operations especially at gt level etc and we are still waiting for those some regulatory changes in terms of having women uh, employees in the ships etc which is emerging fast emerging right uh, having said that uh, there are some ambitious targets and how many number of women employees at a top leadership at a, uh, at a leadership level there have been targets that have been set in that is how uh, and have gas and various businesses are working and uh, there has been a lot of transformation there are quite a few of uh, women employees in the organization right now they are in the decision making roles and they are the one who are taking the organization and i on, on a lighter note i can tell you one thing they are more sensitive to those issues so they this work was bring a lot more changes i can explain <laughs> One final question before I let you go, Mr. Surya, and that is something I alluded to in the beginning as well, right? Today, in order to be successful, businesses have to learn to prioritize the people, the planet, as well as profitability. Why has it become so important, Surya, for companies to create positive impact in the communities and in the society they operate in? Why is it no longer just enough to ensure that the bottom line is doing well, but you also have a role, a responsibility to play to the very surrounding, to the very community? Talk to us about why companies uh, should learn from Grasim on this front. Yeah, it's a very, 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 very important uh, question uh, in this context of sustainability. It's, sustainability is not merely about meeting the environment or the regulatory things. It's about going together along with the society with whom you are, with all the stakeholders with whom you are present. Right. So uh, our sustainability is well supported by our CSR program as well. and that csr program is again come up with the bottom up approach absolutely it each site identifies what are the major needs and then we also have the as as a responsible corporate citizen as i spoke we are we are the one one of those uh, very constructively and engaged with uh, right from the independence and we have a lot of legacy in terms of building the nation post colonial era has a very high amount of uh, top level approach in terms of what the society requires what this country is so accordingly majority of our programs uh, taken five six major elements on is um, education and then basic health and then uh, women empowerment and then uh, some infrastructure development these are some of the major areas we have started focusing on and then now once having this roadmap very clear and this understanding very clear with each of the business then again the bottom up approach is each sites align what are out of these five six which are the most priority in that particular area where they are present what is that society request there so accordingly we 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 come up with our approach and with our program and then uh, the roadmap and the uh, has been laid out on our csr program and it is being followed and year on year we focus and we do measure what we are doing what is the impact how we are spending and how just i can give you one very good example my personal example you know i just moved in from a manufacturing site to 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 as the csr role very recently 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I was heading a facility in uh, rural Karnataka in Gulbarga district. And there our CSR program is very much into education and that's a very deprived society to work. And there are many first-time uh, school going uh, in that particular society. I used to hear a lot of those community people coming and meeting and telling that how that school is so important and how that school has changed and how many of the children are uh, from those communities are now working in very responsible positions as the doctors or engineers are working abroad or or even there were some in some instances there are administrative officers like ias and ips officers from those schools so this is the kind of impact that we have left with our uh, our our, our uh, uh, csr program and this is how we are actually going back and giving it to the society on that note surya valuri it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you thank you so much for making time for fourth partner energy and this special episode of spotlight on sustainability thank, thank you. you very much thanks thanks thank you and for all of those who have just tuned in remember fourth partner energy series spotlight on sustainability is available across our linkedin youtube facebook and twitter channels you can catch it on our website please leave your comments likes and shares and tell us who you'd like to hear from and what we can do to make this show more interesting goodbye and thanks for watching